Good morning, everybody. My name is Kim Beeler. I'm one of the career coaches. I've talked with several of you before, but welcome to week two of Winter Boot Camp and the Resume Cafe. Um, today, we are talking about resumes and how to create experience from no experience. So I want you to either put a reaction on your slide or put in the chat. Tell me if you can relate to this story. I have so many students that come into my office and they come in with a, a resume that they want help with. And honestly, the, the resume is probably the size of an index card, right? And they say, I don't have anything on my resume because I really don't have any good ex paid experience. Can anybody relate to that? Let me see. Somebody put some reactions in. Yay, yes, Shay, thank you. Great, right. Everybody re can relate to that, right? Well. Today, we're going to talk about how to create experience with no experience. And if you watch the resume presentation, you'll realize that resumes are an extremely important in the job search process, right? It's your passport to a profession. It basically tells the story of where you've been and what you've done. So resumes, as you know, are not going to get you a job. They're just not but they're gonna get you an interview, which can get you a job. And that's important because did you know that for every position listed, and I did not know it was this high, but there are approximately 150 resumes that are submitted. That is a tremendous amount of competition. So this means you need to know exactly what employers are looking for on a resume and then be able to communicate that to the employers so that they know you have the skills needed and then you can get that interview. So if you can take anything away from this presentation today, here it is. Experience does not have to be paid in order for it to be good experience. Okay, remember that. So we're gonna talk about how to convey uh, that no experience into experience. And I put a link on the, on the, in the chat that uh, hopefully you all can download the, the document that we're going to need for this, but um, we're going to we're going to go ahead and talk about it. So in order to know, uh, in order to to be able to communicate your experience, you got to know what employers are looking for. So what do employers seek on a resume? Okay. This is a list of the top ten attributes that employers are looking for on a resume, and that's according to our professional association, the National Association of Colleges and Employers. And notice that what, the number one skill or quality is problem solving. Look at that list. What do you notice about that? These are not descriptions of duties and responsibilities, right? But it's more about how someone does their work. Companies are going to train you for the job. Now, obviously, if you're going to be an architect, you have to have architect training. If you're in medicine, you have to have medical background. But for the most, companies are going to train you for the job. But what they cannot train you on is problem solving, working in a team, analytical skills, communication skills. And these attributes can be learned from all kinds of experience, not just paid professional experience. So there's a ton of ways for you to just demonstrate on a resume that you possess these attributes. And let's take a look at some of those areas. You can demonstrate these through um, technology, through volunteering, through coursework, through projects, through athletics. What you need to do is you need to, to think about these areas and, what's, and what skills you learned in each of these areas. Okay, everybody has skills that they've learned in college. If not, I'm really sorry uh, you didn't get the full experience at KU, but everybody learns things in college, right? So you've got to think about your experiences in terms of skills. Okay? We like to call them hard or soft skills or um, in the Career Center, we refer to them as breadth and depth. So let's take a look at that. 
um, the way to conceptualize these experiences through this T model. And at the top, you'll see breath. And breath are those transferable skills that can be applied across many disciplines, right? Those are those soft skills, those breath skills. And then the depth are more content related. So for instance, um, if a student is majoring in environmental studies, okay, you're, they're likely to learn about writing papers. They're learning skills like um, uh, summarizing. They're doing things like analyzing, giving presentations. Their, their depth is content related. They know about environmental studies, maybe conservation science, habitat has that restoration. So these, both the breadth and the depth are skills that are essential for the job market. Okay? And so traditionally you might think of the depth is, is more in line, but actually we need both. And it really helps you not only when you're creating your resume, but think about it in terms of the job search that we, we explored last week. If, if you're a student that is in um, habitat restoration or conservation science, but you really love um, analyzing information, or let's say you enjoy writing papers. Um, so you might be interested in combining the two and writing, maybe being a grant writer for a conservation science organization, okay? But you need to know what your breadth and your depth skills are in order for you to do it. And that's how you start thinking about creating your experiences. So here's the, the sheet that hopefully you downloaded. And this is a really great tool to use when you're exploring resources that may be not paid or professional. I want you to think about any experiences you've had in each one of these boxes. It can be anything. It can be a, a one day volunteer um, thing that you did. Maybe you did the one day at KU, the big event. Um, maybe you were a camp, camp counselor for a week. Um, maybe you did some babysitting. I want you to think about all the different areas that you might be able to draw experience from. Then I want you to write down what some of those soft skills and those hard skills might be, okay? So I'm gonna st stop this recording for just a second and I want you to pick one box and I want you to write down some of the things, um, some of the areas where you might have some experience. So I'm gonna pause this recording and give you just a couple minutes to do that. Get to this. Okay, so I had a student that came in and she was a transfer student um, from a community college and she wanted to apply for a job. And she told me she was just an athlete and she didn't really have any time to get experience. But once we started talking, she told me she played at Kansas City Community College and said she was the team captain. So this is what she, um, let's see if I can get this to go to the next one. These are the skills that she's, she learned. She learned teamwork, her soft skills, teamwork, communicating, leadership skills. And then some of her hard skills is that she was able to manage her time. She was able to be very organized. I mean, she was very um, organized in her time. I guess that's more of a soft skill, but she attended 20 to 30 hours of practice a week while maintaining a GPA. So she found out what are those hard skills and those soft skills that she, she gained from those experience. And so what I want you to do is when you're trying to think about, gosh, what have I done? write down not just the event that you did, but all the skills that you learned from it. Because once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to go um, to start making your resume. And you're going to need to know how to create um, effective bullet point statements in your resume that accurately reflect your breadth and your depth skills or your hard and your soft skills. Okay, so. I have a question. To, oops. Let's see here. Hello. Let's swap the technology. Okay, so I want you to, to look at this, this job description. Okay? When you're writing, getting ready to use those experiences and those hard and soft skills 
into a resume, you're going to want to look at the position description because you're going to target your resume to whatever position that you're applying for. Now, take a look at this. <clears throat> this is a community relations intern position. Look at all the key words that they're looking for. Excellent communication skills, working independently, being able to do research, implement new programs, documentation and analysis. Then it also says excellent um, written and oral communication skills. Do you see how there's a combination of your breadth and your depth and how your different experiences that you've done throughout these different events will relate directly to the position. So once you have those skills, you have those and you see the position description, you can start creating your resume with really strong, effective bullet points. So let me give you an example. These are the components of a really effective bullet point statement. It generally begins with an action verb. Now, I can't tell you the number of people that come into my office that have resume and everything is one after another, responsible for, responsible for, or assist, assist, assist. This does not communicate to a future employer um, a really strong resume. Those are really snooze, snooze, snooze fest. Never use responsible for. There is a book that you can download on our career.ku.edu website or on um, the boot team boot camp team's website. And on page 12 is an, a whole list of action verbs. And it is divided by topics like leadership, teamwork, communication. So it's really easy to, to find these strong action verbs. So I encourage you to go and look on that when you're writing it. Um, I wanna look real quick. It looks like we might have a few questions that I wanna see. Um, let's see. Trying to think. It says, can you please? Um, yes. I will elaborate what athletic role in a team conveys. And, and actually, just a minute. So that's a great question. And exact um, soft skills are those breath skills that we talked about earlier, the um, skills that are like um, pre presentations, communication, um, writing uh, papers, um, things that, or being able to. Um, soft skills are more things that are not about duties. They're more about describe how you do your work. So um, you are, it's those 10 top attributes that I showed on the slide earlier. And this presentation is going to be recorded. So you can go back and you can look at that um, as well. But that's what we mean by soft skills, those breaths. Okay, so the second part of a bullet point a statement is that describes skills and abilities, not just duties or tasks. So you don't want to just put answered phone calls. That's not what you want to do. You want to say provided excellent customer service or displayed effective communication skills by answering multiple phone calls, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You want to describe your skills and your abilities, not just the duties or the tasks. Then you want to provide very detailed and concrete information. If you just had a resume that said answered phone calls, that does not tell the potential reader or potential employer what kind of worker you'll be. It just says that you can answer the phone. Big deal. Everybody can answer the phone. You want to give really detailed information. How many phone calls did you answer in an hour? Did you provide good outstanding customer service? Are you able to effectively um, communicate and answer questions and listen? Those are the kinds of things you wanna add and you wanna be very specific. If I just told you a story and I said, hey, we went out Friday night, it was fun. Okay, that doesn't tell me much. But if I say, we went out Friday night, we went to this new restaurant that just opened and it was really crowded and there was a lot of people, this is obviously before COVID, right? And, and you told a little bit, it's so much more exciting to the reader and it gives much more information. It's the same thing on a resume. And then finally, the last part of a bullet point statement to communicate these experiences is to show accomplishments, maybe a problem that was solved or an idea that was implemented. Okay, for instance, if you look at this, 
yummy steakhouse. You can see it starts off with a really strong action verb, managed reservations. Then it gets more detailed for a busy restaurant with high sales, resulting in the accomplishment increased customer satisfaction. So this is how you can communicate effectively your experiences that you've had, those soft skills or breath or those hard skills, the depth, and combining them to make a really strong statement. Now, again, in the resume book, there is an example in the book about what makes a good bullet point, and it gives you lots and lots of different examples. But for the purpose of this presentation, I want to show you some additional bullet points and how we wrote them for different things like athletics and part-time jobs. But I want to ask if there are any questions at this point that I can answer. I need to probably look at my... And you can just jump right in if you want to unmute and ask, that's fine too. Okay. Hello? Yes. Um, yeah, I have a question. Sure. So about the adjectives that you said in the resume book, like leadership and other um, verbs, other defining statements that we use. So do we have to use them like, should we use them for each and every skill that we have acquired or is it more like a sentence, not a bullet point? Is it more like, is the, I, I think I understand it. You're saying that if you mm -hmm. use, are you supposed to just write down key words or are you supposed to write a sentence? Yeah, exactly. Right, you never just wanna write key words. And, and that's a great question. A lot of people on their resume, they will write, at the top skills and they'll write organized, detail oriented, um, good communicator. That I, I really, that you never really wanna do that. And here's the reason why. If you're gonna list skills on a resume, those should be some hard skills like computer skills or language skills, things that are very concrete or certifications. But if you just write organized, detail oriented, and um, those, those verbs or those adjectives, excuse me, should really be included in the bullet point statement itself. So anybody can say they're a good communicator, but if you need to prove it by adding um, details and concrete information in your bullet point that mm -hmm. shows or demonstrates that you are a good communicator. Does that make sense? Right. So you mean like we have to uh, give proof that we have um, done something in that area and that defines the adjective? Correct. Correct. So uh, if you are wanting to show, if you're applying for, well, let's, let's take a look. Let's just take a look at some of these because that's a great question. Yeah. Um, here's an example of part-time jobs. You can see that um, many of you maybe have had um, you work at Subway or a fast food restaurant. And I get this a lot. Well, I didn't get any experience. I mean, it's not, I don't have any good experience that's relatable. That's not right. You get a lot of experiences by working at a fast food restaurant. Here's an example. Manage influx of 10 plus to go orders at once, ensuring that complex sandwich orders are made correctly and efficiently. Okay. What does that statement tell the reader about you? Well, that you can manage several orders at once, you can, you can prioritize, you can multitask. You, it says that you made the orders correctly, which means you're detail oriented and you're efficient. You don't wanna just write made sandwich orders for customers. That doesn't give any information about who you are as a worker. It doesn't communicate those top 10 attributes that employers are looking for, and it may not reflect what the position description is looking for in a candidate. Okay. Let me give you another example. If you don't have a lot of experience, but you have taken some relevant courses. So for instance, say that you are a, a film um, and theater major and you are applying to a marketing or advertising position and you don't have any marketing or advertising experience, but you have relevant coursework you might wanna list it as relevant coursework 
so that the reader knows, well, I may not have lots of experience in that field, but at least I know about the topic. And that becomes really important if you're a freshman or you're a sophomore um, that really hasn't had gotten into their major very much, but you've taken a lot of different courses um, to get into the major. So for instance, you may not have had all the business courses, but maybe you took some introduction to business courses so that you know a little bit of information. Same with journalism. You may not be in the journalism school yet, but you've taken some pre-journalism courses. Also, um, senior projects, I can't tell you how much, how many skills you obtain when you do a senior project. Take a look at the last bullet point, water quality in the Arkansas River. Okay. Identified and explained positive contributions and critical importance of river to area community members um, and report distributed to local manufacturing companies. Okay, I guess there might be a typo on that. But what, what that's communicating is that you, that you are able to explain probably difficult aspects or aspects about um, water quality or the, or the topic that what you're studying to a group of people. You're able to write a report and then just and give it to um, people to read. And maybe, maybe you might even include presented project to a class of 30 plus students and professors. It gives a lot more information about you as a potential candidate. So use that senior project and think about all the things you did. Did you write a report? Did you research? Did you have to present that to the class? Did you have to discuss it? Did you work in teams or did you work independently? Did you analyze? Think about all the things you did in your senior class projects or a class project in general and use that as part of your experience. Did that answer your question? Yep. Okay. Um, let's look at some volunteer opportunities. If you are thinking about maybe going into um, community engagement or social media coordinator position, a volunteer day, a service day, um, you may have had an opportunity to do some posting on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, advertising. Look how this, this bullet point really talks about the hard skills and the soft skills. Okay. Let's take a look at extracurricular activities. Do not dismiss these as really good experience. Um, extracurricular activities, you gain lots of teamwork, you gain leadership, you gain um, multitasking and organizational skills because you're going to school and classes and that you're doing these extracurricular things on the side. It's all about how you describe it. Okay? So if you were a student ambassador or you gave tours for your school or uh, maybe if you're a freshman and you were in high school and you were a new student orientation person that, that introduced the school to the incoming freshman. Think, look how this says, built positive relationships with 25 plus prospective students and families weekly. Okay. That means you're able to relate to people. That means you're able to build strong relationships. And look, it gives a very quantitative number, not just built relationships with students and parents. 25 perspective per week, okay? It says you utilize listening and effective communication skills while serving as a positive KU ambassador. What employer wouldn't wanna hire somebody that can do that? That is a really important soft or breath skill. So that's a great way to communicate that. Okay, it looks like I may have another question. Let me take a look at this. Um, if you are still, uh, um, good question. If you are a graduating senior, is it okay to mention relevant coursework if the material is high level and directly related to the content or the position? Yes, your position, your resume should target whatever the position description is looking for. So if you wanna highlight that, say for instance, if you keep seeing over and over and over that you must have Java, in order to do this job and knowledge of Java. Um, you can say that you took um, 
computer, whatever the class might be, um, computer, software, language, blah, 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 including, and, and make that known at the very beginning. Or you can just incorporate that into your bullet point statements as well. So it really depends um, on what you're doing. And if you have questions about it, what we need to do is just kind of look at your resume and get the overall picture to see where it best fits in. Because remember, this is your resume. There's no, there are some guidelines that you should use and then some formatting things that you should keep in, to, in mind, but it's your resume and whatever is gonna communicate effectively to your future employer that you have the skills needed is gonna be a successful resume, okay? So hopefully that, that answered your question. All right, I wanna look at another, um, another. Yes, we can. Okay, so Greek life, there's tons of skills. If you're in Greek life, whether it be an academic um, uh, fraternity or sorority or the, the, the traditional Greek life fraternity and sorority, tons of skills there. Um, you, as a member, you have to prioritize your um, st studies while attending weekly meetings. Maybe you've done, you were a secretary for the group or maybe um, you organized an event. Think about the activities that you've done while you were there and the hard and soft or breadth and depth skills that you had. Notice, notice that in the second bullet point, it, it doesn't say balanced a budget and tracked expenses. Rather, it goes a little deeper and it says balanced a $75,000 budget. Now that's more impressive than just saying balanced a budget. And then, you, tr you didn't just write track expenses, but you tracked it using Excel. So that communicates to the reader that you know how to use Excel. And that result was the chapter stayed within the allotted budget. That's the solution. So again, there are so many um, experiences that you may not have thought of that really communicate effectively that you are right for this job. Here's the question that I got asked about athletics and club sports and intramurals. Um, these are great statements that tell a lot about you as a, as a student athlete and as a future employer. Take a look at this. Committed approximately 30 hours per week to training, studying playbooks, watching film, travel, and playing matches while maintaining a full course load and a cumulative great point average of 3.62. Wow, that's amazing. That tells a lot to a future employer. You're gonna be able to handle a lot in your new job. Um, I love the last one too, served as a mentor to incoming freshman players. Use positive reinforcement to train players on new drills. If you're gonna apply for a teaching position, what a great bullet point statement to have. So, um, somebody asked me the difference between hard and soft skills. I just want to mention again, you can put your, your hard skills on your resume that are separate from your bullet points, if that makes sense. But they should be things like languages. Okay? You might want to put languages, um, intermediate, written and spoken Spanish, or conversational French, or basic sign language. Um, you can also see that they've put things in uh, fluent in a variety of social media. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. There are the computer skills. Um, I'll get, I get asked a lot, should we put in Microsoft Word? Probably not. Um, I did that here if, because the person under certifications got certified in Mac, Microsoft Word. But pretty much everybody, when, if you come out of college and you don't know how to use Microsoft Word, um, I don't know what to tell you, but they assume that you know that. Um, unless it says you must have uh, a, a very fluent knowledge in Microsoft Word, then you might wanna put, you know, put it in for a certification or that you actually have that. But most of the time you don't need to include it. And then certifications, this becomes really important if you're applying for healthcare positions or things that need, um, need uh, you, know, you need to have in order to do the job like first aid um, licensures, that's important Doctor, for teachers. Um, was there a question? Oh, okay. So I've got a couple, um, any other questions? 
So you really want to think about these hard and soft skills because I'm telling you, once you start talking with a career coach or you start talking with your friends about a position, you will find that you have a lot more experience to bring to the table than you think. Just because it's not, um, just because it's not paid doesn't mean it's not great experience. So if you need help trying to, to create bullet points based on your experience, make an appointment with us at the Career Center. Um, write down all the skills, the hard skills, the soft skills that you think you have, and then bring that information and we can help you get started on writing bullet points and telling you how to kind of to create that perfect resume to the job that you want. Hey, Kim, I have a question. Sure. So is there an, a length that we should strive for? Because I was told my freshman year, it should only be one page. And then how do you balance um, doing these bold points and expanding upon your experiences, but you still keep it at one page? Great question, Kate. Great question. Typically, resumes like to be kept to one page. That is particularly important for business fields. However, if you are someone that has been in the field for a long time, you might have a two-page resume. And that is completely fine as long as it's relevant. If you have all kinds of experiences that have to do with the job description, so say you're applying for advertising and you were a, an um, intern in an advertising agency and you did publications for student union activities and you had four or five things, but then you also did, um, you worked at Subway part-time and, and that's gonna take up the next page you might think about just omitting that because you have already have enough experience. Um, if you want to show that you're able to do all those things and work, you could just put at the bottom additional experiences and list them with the date and not do bullet points for those, those that are not as relevant. So um, you make a really good point when you're creating a resume, you uh, want to put the most important things first. However, You'll also know that we say to put things in reverse chronological order. So you might be saying, hey, Kim, um, I want to put my internship from two summers ago at the top, but my most recent experience is working at Subway. How do I make that happen? You do that by creating a different heading. So for instance, you might create the first heading would say relevant experience, and you put your advertising internship up front and then you can put additional experience under another heading and put that subway experience. So you're able to bring the most important to the top. And that's what you wanna do when you're describing your skills and your experiences. And make sure that when an employer looks at your resume that it screams to them, this person has what I'm looking for, okay? Is there and a rule on tech size? Um, tech size should be no more than 12. I would say um, it's between 10.5 and 12. You can play with the margins a little bit. You can move it up to 0.75 on each of the margins. Um, you want to have enough white space that it's pleasing to the eye. I have a lot of students that come in and they try to get it all on one page and it's just so crammed that I don't even like to read it and neither will the employer. If you have two pages, it is important that you not um, divide up your experiences. So if, for instance, if you have four bullet points for a job, you don't put two of the bullet points on the first page and then two of them on the second. You keep it together. And if you have two pages, you wanna make sure that it's, it's enough to fill up a, at least a half a page on the second page. In other words, you don't just want one line or two lines on the second page. Good question. Let's see, I, I think I have another question. For Greek life, many international students do not want to join it as it's more of an American group mostly. So should we consider joining um, a group or another student body? Absolutely. I say if, if um, especially if you have time. I mean, we've got seniors, you've got one more semester, um, freshmen through junior, you've got, you've got plenty of time. Join some experiences. You can join professional associations on campus uh, maybe if you were in the pre-nursing club or the architect club, you can join um, political advocacy groups, you can service organizations. If you go to what's called SILK, 
and um, I believe it's, I'll put it in the chat, um, silk.ku.edu. Um, it gives you the list of student organizations and you can actually look for different groups that you can participate in. So it, you don't have to have all of those experience. Those are just examples of, of places that you can get experience.